Petersburg Clearwater with its sugary white sands and pristine waters. It hosted the fourth round of the 2022 Class 1 World Powerboat Championship. P1 Powerboat Racing Extravaganza where the Class 1 fleet was joined by the Supercast, Super Stocks and various other classes as well as PWC Racing with the Aquacross Grand Prix. St. Pete Clearwater is considered the jewel of Florida's Gulf Coast, with world-class award-winning pristine white sand beaches and emerald green Gulf waters on a sun-drenched peninsula separating the Gulf of Mexico from Tampa Bay, just 90 miles from Orlando. St. Pete's trendy downtown area is a social, commercial and artistic hub with a great vibe, including excellent dining options, bars and shopping. There is a vibrant cultural scene in St. Pete which is famous for its ever-changing murals and street art, a dynamic community of local artists and of course its museums. The Museum of Fine Arts has a world-renowned collection of art from all ages and the world-famous Dali Museum houses the largest collection of the famed surrealist work outside Spain. St. Pete Clearwater is also a sporting paradise, with its excellent year-round climate making it a mecca for water sports, including kayaking, paddleboarding and marine motorsports. Something for everyone and all watchful for a close-up on St. Pete's new pier, with the pier TV restaurant overlooking the weekend action. Now let's see what happened in the last round at the Great Lakes Grand Prix in Michigan City, Indiana. season, Husky Racing were the favourites, leading the world standings on 40 points going into round three with Triple Two Offshore Australia and JBS Racing trailing 13 points behind and needing a win to keep their world title hopes alive. The conditions on the day were very rough and windy on Lake Michigan. Husky Chocolate Steve Curtis and Travis Pastrana had pole position after an excellent qualifying run. But Triple Two Offshore Australia got off to a flying start, catching up with Husky as they went neck and neck in the opening drag race to the Commitment Boy. Darren Nicholson and Giovanni Carcatella of Triple Two Offshore Australia had the speed they needed to overhaul Husky and take the lead with some very smooth handling in very challenging conditions. X Insurance's Alex Pratt and Miles Jennings finally got a race start after two disappointing rounds. And they got off to a very bumpy start in fourth behind JBS Racing, tossing and turning in the waves, causing damage to their boat. But they stuck to it as they found their rhythm, kept the nose down and got the pace to move up and challenge JBS for third on the inside lane, eventually overhauling Stevenson and Stanco as X Insurance moved up to third. Out in the lead, Carcatella and Nicholson as Triple Two Offshore Australia solidify first place with some very smooth handling on what are very rough conditions. Husky not looking as smooth, but Curtis is going to feel the course out for the first few laps and then go up a gear as they try to keep within striking distance of Nicholson and Carcatella. JBS Racing kept up the pressure on X Insurance right to the end, but it was too much for the boat. Stanko and Stevenson out of the race near the end. This was the Aussie Boats Day. Carcatella and Nicholson sublime with a much needed win, completing and winning their first race of the year. Husky runners up and what a success today. Hats off to X Insurance. They struggled early on, they took huge hits. Their boat was damaged, but they kept at it and not only finished the race, they got themselves on the podium.
meeting at St. Pete Clearwater, including a brand new team, DF Young. DF Young features two veterans of the sport, with Throttleman Rich Wyatt alongside driver Mark Granite in their 51 Mr. Boat. Yeah, we're really happy to be here. Um, you know, the class has started to grow and evolve over in the U.S. Um, you know, over the past couple of years, we've been keeping an eye on it. So we're uh, you know, excited to be here. It's something we want to be a part of. A lot of competition, a lot of professionalism. So we're you know, really excited to be a part of it. Yeah, we've been friends for many, many years. So not only in the cockpit, we, we talk daily. It's, it's supernatural in the boat when we're operating. It's almost like a conversation on the phone that we, you know, we had. Hey, what, what if this happened? What if this happened? Does this feel good? That, yep, that feels right. So it's a super easy conversation. They'll be up against the might of Husky Racing, which still leads the overall championship as Throttleman Steve Curtis and driver Travis Pastrana go for the world title in 2022. Husky is a world-renowned brand in racing from Formula One to IndyCar. The CEO of Husky Global was in St. Pete to watch his team compete. I am the new CEO of Husky uh, Global. And then Husky Chocolate and Husky Wear and all these other companies kind of fall underneath that, that same umbrella. And we've been using P1 because it is the peak, it's the best, and everything what we do is to, is to be the best. You know, we won Indy 500. I mean, no one expected that, to be honest, we didn't either, but we did. Um, so everything we do is full throttle, 100% always. Right now we have Steve as a throttle man, Sir Steve Curtis, right? And, and Travis Pastrana, which is, who's, you know, who I follow personally for years. It's like he's a legend and when he does. So, it's an unbelievable thing that we have these two guys in, the, guys in the cockpit. Not only it's a super team professionally, but they're just the sweetest guys. They're really good ambassadors for the brand and they're really good ambassadors for the whole sport. Triple Two Offshore Australia finally have a win under their belt. With Throttleman Giovanni Carpitella and driver Darren Nicholson continue their winning ways in St. Pete. Third in the standings going into round four with JBS Racing with driver and team owner Jeff Stevenson sharing the cockpit with Throttleman Michael Stanko. Also back with a fixed up boat was ex-insurance Good Boy Vodka with Alex Pratt throttling alongside British driver Miles Jennings. We got it all fixed thanks to MTI, a little bit of cosmetic damage in the last race, but now uh, we just had a great open few laps there and went, yeah. went fantastic. Qualifying time trials would determine the starting lineup for the race, with the big prize being the coveted pole position inside lane. Setup is key for these boats, with everything from weight distribution to selecting the right prop and gear ratio for the flatter waters of St. Pete Clearwater, which features long high speed turns. You know, a race like this in the flat water is uh, very difficult to overtake. <coughs> because it's a uh, it's high speed race. So if you want to overtake somebody else, all you do is in the start. Or it's really difficult during the circuit because the speed is more or less the same for everybody. A couple of miles different, but not enough for overtaking somebody else. Well, we just about to go out for the pole position. Really important pole for us. This course is going to be very difficult to overtake. So, it's, you know, we want to get out there, get a good pole position. If we can be in pole for the race tomorrow, it'd be a major advantage. Husky Racing laid a great lap time of 2 minutes 51.62 seconds on their first lap. Triple Two Offshore Australia were out next, but their fastest lap of 257.53 was nearly 6 seconds off the pace. Well, was not good, we don't have enough speed. As I told you this morning, we don't have a propeller for this kind of water. We don't have a faster airing uh, forge. Next out was JBS Racing, Stevenson and Stanco going all out. And look at that time, 255.76. That puts them in provisional P2 ahead of Triple Two Offshore Australia. It was awesome. I mean, a little bumpy on the on the back, but you know we put it together and uh, started sliding around the corners at high speeds, just like we should be. And uh... so it'll be great to just show what we can do. Jeff and I, first year in Class One, we're kind of the underdogs, other than. Yeah, uh, ex-insurance boys, but uh, you know we got the best set of wheels out there by B Blades, 
I got the best crew. Jeff allows me to do what I need to do, change the setup. About 30 seconds before we pushed off the dock and uh, here we are. Let's pray to God that uh, it holds out the second and show what, what we got. X-Insurance Good Boy Vodka taking out their freshly repaired boat. Got a time of 309.26, putting them in fourth provisionally. Finally, newcomers DF Young got their boat in the water for the first time, just in time for the qualifier. They ran their sleek grey boat to put in a time of 3 minutes.23. They edge out X Insurance Good Boy Vodka to start in fourth position. Hey, listen, um, we're super happy with the boat. It, we, we were literally putting the boat in the water with fresh engines, hustled out there. Uh, we hadn't been on the course, we hadn't had time to test it. Uh, so to be within seven and a half, eight seconds of the, the top boat, we're super happy with what we've got going into tomorrow. And so Husky Joplin's Curtis and Pastrana start in pole position for right four. Impressive run for JBS who will start in their best position this year in P2. In front of previous race winners, Triple Two Offshore Australia in third. provided a splendid backdrop to a party hosted by CMR Roofing and Construction where drivers, crews and their families from all the racing classes relaxed and mingled while enjoying the art. St. Petersburg, Grand Prix. The teams complete final preparations before the race as crowds gather and a party atmosphere kicks off in the VIP section of St. Pete Pier. Triple Two Offshore Australia have proven they have the pace. Can they finish and continue their winning ways after their round three victory? Chopper can solidify their overall lead here with a win. X Insurance Good Boy Vodka have had a slow rise and a tumultuous season. They have their work cut out for them starting in fifth and last place. JBS Racing were spectacular in qualifying with that excellent P2 result. But now they have to see it through in the race in a talented field. Boat, class one fleet goes out onto the course. Just seconds to go before the green flag goes up. Boats line up for the start. The pace boat gives the green flag once they're all in line. Green flag is up. The race is on. A great start from Triple Two Offshore Australia. But Husky Chocolate stays in touch with the Aussie boat while DF Young is a boat's length ahead of JBS Racing, which is falling back. Smooth, light shot waters off St. Pete Clearwater, the smoothest race so far in the season after three very rough rounds. Looking forward, JBS's onboard camera, Triple Two Offshore Australia, zooming off to its port side, while JBS tries to keep up with Husky to its starboard side. Husky is steadily gaining on Triple Two Offshore Australia as Curtis and Pastrana move into the lead with some excellent pace. On the outside, DF Young in fourth, leading X Insurance Good Boy Vodka. JBS Racing are falling way back. It's going to be difficult for them to recover if they slip back further. Stancombe and Stevenson are in their best start on the grid of the season and are eager to capitalize. Husky Chocolate now really picking up the pace. Not to mention they have the inside lane pole position advantage. Curtis and Pastrana take control of this race early, loving this smooth conditions. JBS Racing has also found their rhythm. Stanko and Stevenson showing that a small five-man team can race with the best of them as they find the pace to now pass Triple Two Offshore Australia. 
Despite the smoother conditions, the drivers travelling at these speeds are subject to a constant pounding inside the cockpits. In a fight for fourth, X-Insurance, Good Boy Vodka on the outside, taking the action to DF Young as Alex Pratt and Miles Jennings pass the new team to move into fourth. Husky in the lead, JBS in second in hot pursuit as they come around the top of the course and head back to the pier. JBS in hot pursuit of Husky, racing ahead, takes a tighter line to the left-hander, but Husky is well in control of the lead. DF Young and X-Insurance Good Boy Vodka still jostling for fourth position. X-Insurance gaining on the outside before entering the sweeping left-hander on the inside. Lap one, Husky in the lead, JBS racing second, triple two offshore Australia third, X-Insurance Good Boy Vodka fourth, and DF Young in fifth. X-Insurance Good Boy Vodka is up one position, but they need to crack the top three for a podium, with DF Young having the inside lane advantage over Pratt and Jennings. Out in the lead, Husky Chocolate reigns supreme as Curtis and Pastrana go for the team's third win of the year. But JBS Racing is still up there within striking distance on Husky's port side. Triple Two Offshore Australia is in third, and behind the Australian boat, the battle for fourth continues between X Insurance Good Boy Vodka and DF Young as they come around the left hander. Coming around the checkered boy, DF Young are the ones now with the inside lane. Can the newbies maintain their lead over the hard charging X Insurance Good Boy Vodka? Great pace on X Insurance Good Boy Vodka on the outside as they stay neck and neck with DF Young. Both boats going flat out, maintaining top speed, but Rich Wyatt and Mark Granite of DF Young come out in front and in fourth position. Excellent racing from the newcomers to class one. The silver bullet of DF Young going full speed ahead, setting its sights on the veterans up ahead. The next target, triple two, Offshore Australia. Triple two, Offshore Australia on track for a podium, but the team has struggled to find the right setup for these waters. In second position and giving Husky a run for their money while opening a lead over the rest of the field is JBS Racing. Stanko and Stevenson very impressive here in St. Pete. In the battle for third place, three boats are within seconds of each other. Triple Two Offshore Australia, DF Young and X Insurance Good Boy Vodka. Husky Chocolate has a strong lead now. They're a truly exceptional partnership. Steve Curtis holds the record for being the youngest Class 1 throttleman to ever win a title at the tender age of 21 in 1985. While Travis Pastrana is a renowned professional motorsports competitor and stunt performer who has won championships in Supercross, Motocross and Rally Racing. Triple Two Offshore Australia is not having a good day. Disappointing after their win in the last round, but Nicholson and Carpitella are just trying to stay in touch with the leading boats to at least save the day with a podium. But they're going to have to hold off the hard-charging rookies in DF Young who are giving chase to the Aussie boat. X Insurance Good Boy Vodka bringing up the rear in fifth, but very much within striking distance of their rivals. Pratt and Jennings at least continuing their racing form from the last round after not being able to race a single lap in the first two rounds in Cocoa Beach and Sarasota. Lap five, DF Young stay in pursuit of Triple Two Offshore Australia and their efforts pay off as Triple Two Offshore Australia are in trouble, slowing down on the circuit. That puts DF Young up into third and on track for a podium in just their first race. X Insurance Good Boy Vodka also passed the struggling Triple Two boat. Pratt and Jennings moving up to fourth and trying to catch DF Young. As the laps wind down at the St. Petersburg Grand Prix, Husky Chocolate reigns supreme. Nobody looks like they're going to catch them out there. What a race for JBS Racing. Jeff Stevenson and Michael Stankov on track for their best result of the season in runner-up. And that would also catapult them to second position in the world standings if the positions stay the same. Husky going into the last lap with a comfortable lead and excellent momentum. But the excitement is not over yet. JBS Racing still on course for runner-up, but DF Young and X Insurance Good Boy Vodka have both caught up as they enter their last lap. Can JBS hold them off? But in the very last lap, JBS Racing have a problem. 
they're slowing down. Looks like they've lost one engine, and sure enough, DF Young is now in second position with X Insurance. Good boy Vodka following them into third as JBS struggles. What a cruel blow for them and a windfall for the other two teams who are now in podium positions. The final stretch of the final lap, and there it is. What an emphatic start to finish win for the number 21 Husky boat. Curtis and Pastrana are the St. Petersburg Grand Prix champion. Here comes DF Young, runners up in their first ever Class 1 race. Good job with their setup, consistency, technical reliability, as throttle with Rich Wyatt and driver Mark Granite bring their Mystic Boat home in second. Just seconds ahead of third place, X Insurance Good Boy Vodka. And just trying to bring their boat home for a race finish. The unfortunate JBS Racing. They were so close, but that's racing. Travis Pastrana raises the flag and celebrates the team's third win in four outings this year. And so the final result here in St. Pete Clearwater. Husky Chocolate the champs. DF Young runners up. X Insurance Good Boy Vodka third. JBS Racing managed to finish the race in fourth. DNF for Triple Two Offshore Australia. The team did just such an amazing job, and I mean, Steve's always on point, but um, it was really cool. We didn't have communication really, so he was just pushing 10 tenths the whole time, and it, that was a fun race, man. I tell you what, really cool course. Yeah, we had some tactics. We spoke about what we were going to do. We managed to get a great start. We were just on it, on it, held it flat, flat, flat the whole way around the thing. Uh, no one was on our outside. I could see a couple of sponsors there at one point. And then, you know, we, when we got around the main bend and then into the yellow, the left hander, Travis took that like pinpoint on. I mean, we swept it so we knew they couldn't be on the inside because we were feet away from it. So that was his side. It was yeah. plenty of room. Yeah. <laughs> and boom, you know, so I know they had to go across our wake. So I know we had a gap enough that we could, you know, start to pace ourselves a little bit, you know, instead of just being out of control. went really good uh, you know a prop was a little too small we were hitting the top of the rev limiter but uh, we were really starting to catch the guys at the end so um, you know I think a one bigger prop we would have been right we, on the pace. absolutely we won one pitch up we would we would have got him Rick was right everything's good it was running level good in the corners and you know, obviously we're still learning the boat but uh, it was good we were catching so uh, we're pleased yeah you know yeah. that's the main thing yeah no I think uh, I think we'll be good to go next time yeah yeah I nice. sort of started to feel a vibration maybe halfway through the Halfway through the race and uh, last lap. Shot one, one engine down. I know, just... Had was, second wrapped up like, it like a, you wouldn't believe it she was. It was ours. It was right there. So close. No. <laughs> we didn't break any number eights today. It's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, we've, we, we've raced together a long time. There are a few races that you can come back and think, all right, you know, from a memory standpoint, you know, racing with Richie and all the work that these guys have put into getting us out here, coming out to class one and getting on the podium is like a, it's like a dream. Well, it was nice to finish, obviously come back with a, you know, a good result. They're always happy to see us at the end. Got to be the first uh, chocolate milk chewy. Feel pretty good about it. Honestly, to be a part of this Husky Racing team, uh, to get to sit next to Steve, this is literally a dream come true. It was so much fun out there. And just, especially those first couple laps, just right on the edge, just sliding that thing. It's it, no feeling like 140 mile an hour, just drifting through that uh, that dog leg left was, uh, was one of the coolest feelings of my life. In the overall Class 1 World Championship standings after round four, it's Husky Racing with 75 points on top. Triple Two Offshore Australia still in second with 47 points. JBS Racing Panthers.